I woke up this morning. That's a good thing. Yeah. I'm breathing. The sky will be blue today. The sun will be shining. We're in Phoenix, Arizona, so I'm doing great, G. Doing great. Eddie, go ahead. Play your laugh drops. <laughs> You fat little bastard. Go ahead. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> you enjoy yourself. Have fun. I heard Pat Boyle. It's a great day to be a Knicks fan. The Nets. Ha, 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 ha. Up yours. Hey, Boomer, you crapped on the Nets for years and years. You know what? Now the crap's on you. Take that as you're sitting in your toilet all morning and can't washy, be here washy. for this celebratory ass. day. I'm annoyed. That's how I am. I'm, yeah. I'm legit annoyed. They got rid of Kyrie. Fine. Get out. As much as I said they should re-sign him because he was playing better and I thought he wanted to be here with Kevin Durant. I was wrong on that one. The Durant one, I was dead wrong on because I'm the fool that sits there and listens to that stupid ETCS, whatever the hell of it is, podcast, and listen to a guy who wants to play basketball, listen to a guy who talks about winning, listen to a guy that wants to play with guys that want to win. You've got a good young team. Why the hell could you have not been the guy to lead these young guys to the next level and actually win? Why? Easy way out. Let's go to Phoenix. Yeah, and I actually defended him. And by the way, I wanted to ask you, is it better that Boomer's not here or worse that Boomer's not here today? With I could do it again tomorrow now with him. Maybe. if he's. I mean, depending if he's, this is a stomach virus or a food poisoning thing, true. I guess that's true. If he does come back tomorrow, then this is hell on earth for you. Because not only do you have to sit here and talk about this for five hours, and then tomorrow he's just going to spew it all over you, um, figuratively and literally. Uh, but, yeah, this is... I, when he went to Golden State, I was like, listen, he wants to go win a championship. He went there. He did not just ride their coattails because he won two NBA Finals NBA. He was amazing. And he was great. Yep. And they all figured it out, and they won two championships, and it wasn't just him hopping on the back of that team. You know, then he ends up leaving fine. He wants to do something else here on the East Coast with the Brooklyn Nets. This time now, for sure, this is the easy way out. Yeah. And once Kyrie Irving was gone, he had the conversations with the Nets brass, and he said, we can't win a championship here. I've decided that, and I'm going to go elsewhere. Trade me. And the Nets, I think, did pretty well. I think they did great, actually. Yeah, in the return. But this has to be the first time ever. Now, now I've been looking, searching. The first time ever that a team that has been as high as, what, second at some point in the Eastern Conference in the standings before Kevin Durant got hurt, they were all the way up there, has traded away two superstars when they were in prime playoff position. It never happened. Even now, having gone 5-9 and in the last 14, they're 32-22. and Yeah. I mean, think about this. So this team is probably going to go to the playoffs still. I mean, I think they'll (laughs) win enough games to be able to hang on. At the very least, they'll be in the play-in tournament. Both these guys bailed. Yep. And I know that Kyrie Irving wanted to get a contract, and he wasn't probably going to get it from the Nets. But, I mean, is there anything inside of either one of these guys that's like, hey, we came here, we made a commitment, I could get a contract after this year if I'm Kyrie Irving? Kevin Durant says, hell, we'll see what happens in the offseason, but we're here, we're playing well, and when I come back and I'm healthy, let's give it a run here, and then we'll figure it out in the offseason. But neither one of them wanted to do that. This is classic bullcrap superstar NBA stuff, and this is probably, now if you think about all the NBA stars getting together, it's got to be the biggest mess out of every single one of them, the biggest failure. Of course, I take joy in it because I just remember all the Nets fans at the time. You did it respectfully, but a lot of Nets fans did not. Um, Saying, ah, you know, the Knicks are the second team in town now. They picked the Nets over the Knicks and all that crap that we heard. And these two guys just left it in shambles. And this morning is finally, finally the end. I think the thing that burns you as a Net fan, when you hear Kyrie and I think I have the clip lined up coming up at 6.30, where he talks about how it just it didn't work and we never got it rolling except that there were two occasions when it was working and they did get it rolling and it was when we saw them play. We saw the 18-2 and two stretch here this year where they soared up the standings, got all the way to two, I believe it was, yep. um, in the Eastern Conference and they looked like a championship contending team for sure for the first time in a couple of years. You also had, remember when they first got James Harden? I wanted no part of James Harden. I was at, I Carton and Roberts, I was on with them that day. I didn't yep. understand it. I hated it and I really, I said to Al before, I think that right there is the tipping point to where everything went the wrong way was when they they traded away the players they did to bring in James Harden. That was a mess. But that having been said, when they were on the floor, there was a little stretch there where they looked unbeatable. So we saw it in a glimpse here, a flash there, but their inability to stay on the floor 
for whatever reason. Durant, it's been injury again this year with the MCL. For Irving, it was all the off-the-court crap, the stuff, and I said the Al before. Remember, he's stomping on the stupid Celtic logo? logo? Mm-hmm. Hey, dummy, how's it gone since then? Then he gets hurt. Um, so we've seen glimpses of it. It could have been great. It was a chance that I think any team in the NBA, I really do believe this, most teams in the NBA, especially in the net situation, would have done if they could have. Unfortunately for them, they tried and it blew up in their face. It didn't work. But they took a shot. And now you're building back up. The one thing I would say, and this is a small consolation because you just lost Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant in the span of a week, not even, Um they did get a haul back. They ultimately got Bridges back, and that was what was holding things up. This new owner basically, I guess, went to the GM and said, wait, time out. You're telling me we're not getting Kevin Durant because of Michael Bridges? Make the deal. So they get Bridges, they get Cam Johnson, they get Jay Crowder, who from everything I'm reading, the Nets are going to flip and trade him as well. They got a boatload of picks. You got Finney Smith. You got Dinwiddie. I don't think this is a terrible team, but it's not a championship team. No, uh, not even close, and they did have a shot. I really did believe that when they were playing well and Kyrie Irving got through all the movie stuff and then Kevin Durant, he was going to come back. I know it felt like last year he missed a bunch of time and then the regular season went by and they never gelled, but I really did think there was a chance that this team could get to an Eastern Conference final. Who the hell knows what would happen? And now it's completely disintegrated. And Fleegs just sent me uh, this tweet along the lines of what I was saying about this team being very good and then trading everybody away. So it's the first time a team that had two all-stars on the roster to start a season and both players change teams later in the season. Yeah. First time ever. And these two guys, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, that you're the poster boys for this, but you are. These two guys are why people are turned off by the NBA, turned off by superstars in sports because of this behavior. And there is nobody, absolutely nobody, that can relate to this. Not a single person with any other job in the world can relate to this type of behavior. And it's a turnoff. Now, we're paying attention to it because this is what we do. But if I was just a regular guy going to work and I was seeing what was going on in the NBA here when the product in the regular season absolutely sucks, I wouldn't come be running back to watch these guys. I mean, there's nothing about them that's endearing. There's nothing about them that is that is, is something that you want to show your kids and go, hey, here's your, this is what, look at this, this is a superstar. This is how you want to, you know, the, the, your memories that you're going to have, like I had of Michael Jordan or I had of Patrick Ewing, you're going to have with these guys. These guys suck. Every single decision that they made sucks. The way they handle themselves sucks. They're babies. And Kevin Durant was supposed to be above all of that. But instead, I he was. instead he goes in the off season and requests a trade. That doesn't work out. It threatens to fire the general manager and the uh, and the coach at the time. And then at the trade deadline, when Kyrie's gone, says, "Nope, I'm going to bail too." Yep. So just just horrible stuff. And and this guy, he he claims doesn't care about his legacy. His legacy is completely shot to me at this point. Even if he goes and wins a championship with the Suns, people are going to remember him from bailing and bouncing around and failing and all of these things that have been following in his him in his career more than anything this else. This was his chance. This was his chance to wipe away all the Golden State crap by the, by the critics, not yourself, as you have said. You've been a proponent of what he did um, and really supported what he did because he kind of went there and was the star that they needed to take him over the top and on top of it well they had gone over the top before but you get my point he was the the finals mvp so he really did his part and then some this was the chance where he could have shut everybody up and said all right i hear what you said about golden state how about brooklyn because brooklyn was me and i go back to that playoff game toe on the line three that was a two Mm -hmm. where he played his ass off in that game everybody's hurt it was him and his cast of of characters on that net team which was not great at the time and he almost single-handedly beat the bucks that night And I remember watching that game shot for shot for shot and thinking, my God, this is a performance for the ages. And then he comes up short, partly because his foot wasn't behind the line, which really sucked. And ever since that point, I mean, what a mess. I mean, what an absolute mess. And the Nets are right now, for the moment, a laughing stock because of the way this is blown up in their face. But I will say, if you want to take some positive out of it, not much, you go back to pre all this, and the Nets were a likable team. They were yeah. doing it the right way. They were drafting well. They had young talent. They've completely reverted back to that instantly. 
They, they have, so I don't hate the Nets any longer. I mean, I, the, the fans that were definitely trying to dunk on the Knicks fans t- today, I want to throw it in their face. But other than that, now I don't even care anymore. Good for them. I don't, they'll probably still beat the Knicks with this roster every time they play them. Um, but at this point, you know, they're just another team in the conference, another team in the division. They're not, they're not hateable any longer, and they're just going to go back to, to what they were. Uh, which is which is maybe a good thing for some people, but obviously, you know, the irrelevance that gets talked about in this city when the Nets aren't a story at all it is back. I mean, that that that's probably the most frustrating thing from ownership. And and by the way, Sean Marks, you know, there's going to be people that say anybody would have done this, and and I do agree with that. Meaning, Katie and Kyrie Absolutely. coming here, especially for the Nets. Now, I I was when Kevin Durant went down with the Achilles in the NBA Finals. The next morning, I came on and said, this to me signifies that the Knicks are out of the equation, that the Kevin Durant to the Knicks thing is done. And Fleeks can pull those tapes, and I said, it's not going to happen now. It's done. He's going to be out for a year. It's just not going to happen. And when he ended up you know, going to the Nets and all that unfolded, to me it was smart. So I had disagreed with Boomer. You paid him for a year not to play. The Nets needed something I like agree. that. I agree. Made them relevant. Exactly. They needed something like that. So I, I will defend Sean Marks in, in, in that area. Um, but the fact that you know, nobody could take control of these guys, absolutely nobody. You know, when people laugh at Steve Kerr and say that this guy's not a great coach because he's got all these superstars and anybody could coach the team, but there's something about managing personalities. Now, Steph Curry is a great guy on and off the court, and Kyrie Irving is a total slug. <clears throat> I understand that, but still, like, there's something about managing personalities. Nobody could do it. General manager, manager, and Kevin Durant, by the way, Get this guy in line. If he's supposed to be a leader and a great player, tell Kyrie to shut up and let's do this. And he was never able to get him under control That's either. That's probably the most disappointing part. I li- again, I listen to that podcast and I listen to Durant. His love for basketball is obvious. Just wants to play. And it's obvious to me that he wants to go out and win championships. Um, and he does doesn't care about his legacy for sure but does care about how he's playing and the team he's on and the people he's with and Kyrie Irving is supposed to be his best friend or one of his best friends and he sat back and watched all this crap and never once I mean you heard him when when Irving was dealing with all this stuff with the film and Durant I think they were in Washington and he said to the media I just want this to go I want to play basketball and I don't think he meant that in a way like I want all this you know film stuff I mean the noise he just wanted to come in play basketball move on to the next game the next city and I so to me I've always respected that of him the fact that he never at least not openly never got Kyrie under uh, under control to say Kai what are we doing like, we've got a chance here. I just, man, I tell you, you talk about you guys being right the whole time. <laughs> well, this is one of the man. times. Listen, you see, this is what happens God. in sports, though, Jerry. It comes back around. You had the Daniel Jones, Saquon Barkley take that was right the entire football season. You were able to celebrate that. I would have rather been right with this. And this one comes around. It's karma. It's one of those things. It's sports karma. Yeah. Um, so, no, I am, I am legitimately happy about it. Not so much that that I was right, just the fact that these guys are out of here and the Knicks now are back being the story in New York basketball. That's I just, I'm so tired of them. It made me sick that they got the attention that they got, and now they're gone. And it's, and it's a mess, and it's a disaster, and it's awesome. So I asked Al this question. Out of the three or four years, whatever it is, they've been here. They signed in what? Was it 19? Does that sound right? Yeah. The, the years blend. So in the four years they've been here, the Nets have been on the back page a lot. Mm-hmm. How many times would you say they were on the back page for the right reason as opposed to the wrong reason? I mean, would you consider the Harden trade the right reason? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I didn't like that, but there was nothing wrong with like that. Was not a negative. That wasn't a bad story. Yeah, yeah. I would say so. Yeah. All right. So, so that one, I would say. I mean, it's probably you can count it on one hand. Well, I mean, I think some of the playoff wins that they had, not many of them, but like, you know, leading up to that Milwaukee series, I would think maybe some of those days they might have been on the back page. I'd have to go look. But 
Other than that? No, it's a handful. I think maybe you know that game that they played that you alluded to was one game uh, where they looked unbeatable. It was against the Celtics, right? Didn't they blow the Celtics out when it was Harden, Kyrie, NKD all playing at this high and it level? Looked phenomenal. They did. So maybe that's one of the days, but you're right. I mean, it's been, it's been negative story after negative story after negative story, and now they're not going to be anywhere near the back page. I mean, no. they're going to be you know in a little, little blurb somewhere that Cam Thomas had another 40 points. That's all right, about so it. you mentioned Cam Thomas. I'm going to go to break, but real quick. You're Kevin Durant, and you see this kid lighting up the the, the box score Mm -hmm. night after night after night. Why couldn't Cam Thomas be his Kyrie Irving? Like, why couldn't you... I'm frustrated. You know, I know. I'm, and if you're Cam Thomas, you're going to be like, you know, remember they were talking about Kyrie? Man, was such a great team, and I looked up to him. He gave me advice. They basically just slapped you in the face and walked away from you. Yeah, right. And the fans, by the way. So you know, the, the Nets fans that, that believed in these guys, bought the jerseys, bought the season tickets, they jacked up the prices at the Barclays Center. All the fans that defended it when we were slamming KD and Kyrie, oh, these guys are going to be great or we're going to win a championship. Yeah, I mean, you want to talk about the teammates getting a slap in the face, the entire fan base got a slap in the face. The Brooklyn Nets suck. Yeah, the season right. started, think about this, the season started with Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, and Ben Simmons. Who's left here? <laughs> ben Simmons. I know. I love it. Oh, God. And who's going to take him? Nobody. He's just going to sit here and rot. I'll and tell Brooklyn. you what. You got enough picks over the last couple of days. Give him away. Yeah. Let's they, just start over. Give yeah. him away. But he's still got that massive contract, right? I mean, so that's the other thing. He's still getting paid. Someone will take him. Oh, my God. So Come on. Many. You saw the two points the other night. That Maybe. was a hell of a bank shot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Globetrotters. They'll take them. <laughs> like, it's, the, it's the amazing miss oh machine. Oh, my God. Ben Simmons. I can't. I really cannot believe we're here. I can't. And I know I'm the fool. I get it. 100%. I cannot believe what transpired the last week. Yeah, but can you, can you really blame yourself for thinking that Kevin Durant coming here no, was not I, going I, to work? I, be- you know? I actually believed in I didn't believe in, in, Cur- in Kyrie like, like Durant. I believed in Durant listening to him. Yeah, well, it's moron, a- moron, yeah. moron. <laughs> so, 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 so. <laughs> he he might have landed here already. <laughs> right, seriously. Oh, by the way, you guys were talking about the Kevin Durant Suns jersey. If I can find one of those, today, oh, shut up. Oh, that's one hundred percent going to be my you outfit for tomorrow. One. I guarantee you, go print one somewhere. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, it's Boomer and Geo with Jerry in for a sick Boomer this morning. 